Each morning in Baton Rouge, we rise to meet opportunity. We carry the weight of responsibility proudly. We choose our paths. We move fast and we fly high. We light the way for others to follow. We make it happen. But what really matters is what happens when we land at home. Baton Rouge Metropolitan Airport. Fly easy. This is Inside the Jaguar Nation, presented by Russell Law Firm. Welcome to Inside the Jaguar Nation. I'm Aaron Lee here with Ashley Lyotis, and we have something to celebrate. Ooh. Isn't that right? Oh, yeah, that's right. The Lady Jag SWAC champions and all as well on the bluff. I got my T-shirt on. Ho hold Where's on, look, 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 let me show them, let me show them. All right, there 40 we go. minutes of mayhem, We are baby, yeah. all in. Yeah, let's take a look at how they got here, though. Yeah, this past Thursday, the Lady Jags had a perfect opportunity to seal up their first place in the tournament and win the regular season title, but Texas Southern had other plans. Led by Joyce Kennerson, who finished with 22 points, the Jaguars fall to TSU 66-60, and they thought that they would share the regular season title, but wait, here we go. It's senior day on the bluff for the Ladies Jags hosting Prairie View A&M and two Southern seniors, Brianna Green right here in the, on the lay-in gets the two. And then we have Samantha Duncan right there knocking down that three. She was all fired up, Ashley. Yeah, it's Duncan again saying, why not? It's my last game. Just let her rip for another three. She calls bank, by the way. 21 for Duncan. Lady Jags up. Brianna Green, you just saw right there, steals it with 27 on the day for the 96-58 win over Prairie View. Yeah. Vision for something and um, to see it come to fruition. It is, I, I enjoy watching the kids celebrate it more than I celebrate. It's pretty awesome. You know, you know. The only thing that would be even better is is to get our next three games and uh, to see them cutting those nets down in uh, Houston. You know, and that's our goal. And uh, you know, Houston, we coming to see you, baby. All right, let's take a look at some final stats. Look, points in the paint is where the Jaguars outplayed the Panthers, 38 to 16. Second chance points as well. They had 20 to 4 with the Panthers. And then bench points, SU finished with 33 to 24 points. Just to add, Skylar Overe was 9 points. And then Carly, uh, Car Courtney Parsons with 8 points. Alaric Scott, 8 points. She's shooting a 3 well. And the Jaguars pull it off. Ready for Houston, baby. Now let's move on to those men. Senior night again on the bluff, and Jerry Sam all smiles along fellow senior Chris Thomas and Emmanuel Shepard. And it's Sam that would get it started with the elbow jumper. He finished with 12 points on the night. Then it's the other senior, Chris Thomas, with the fadeaway. Bank fade, ring it up for his 13 on the night. Come on, Ashley, what oh you yeah, got? Yeah, Jags go ice cold in the second half, but the Panthers, well, they were hot. Zachary Hamilton hits two big threes late in the half, and the Jags. Oh, they couldn't bounce back. They fall to Prairie View 77 to 69. Well, they, they hit an array of threes. Uh, one of the guys that hit, a, hit one of those threes hadn't hit a, hit a three in a while for them. So uh, it, it was a combination of guys that don't normally hit threes. They hit threes. And then uh, a guy, you know, one guy we kind of left in the corner uh, that normally shoot the basketball. We was a little late. And they did a good job of knocking down shots. All right, let's look at some final stats for the men. Eddie Reese finished with 13 points, six rebounds, and four assists. Here were the Jaguars. Didn't do well, three-point percentage, three for 19. That's only 15.8%. That's not going to get it done. And again, leaving points on the board, free throw shooting, 18 of 29, 28. That's 64%. Although they lost, the Jaguars will be a fourth seed in this uh, next week's tournament, and let's hope they can get it together before Tuesday. But someone that always has it together is the human jukebox as they bring you the sweet sounds. Time for our first break, but later in the show, we have part two of our interview with track and field as they reca recap their SWAT championships. Look, it's a lot of medals in the building. 
Coming up next, we talk a little more basketball, and we also bring some home opener baseball your way. We'll be right back. This is Inside the Jaguar Nation, presented by Russell Law Firm. Welcome back to Inside the Jaguar Nation. I'm Erin Lee. She's Ashley Lyons. Welcome to church. And it's time for our Performer of the Week. Oh, yeah. This week's Performer of the Week focused on the seniors as they played their final regular season game at the Mini Dome. The emotion part, um... I, show the back of my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, me and Jared kind of made a bet that we wouldn't cry or get emotional. So, but in the back of my mind, if I was able to, I would cry because this. Been, I mean, I've been for four years, been playing with Coach Pew for four years. You know, yeah. if anybody who's came through, you know that's, you know that's a tough and you know, those job. So, yeah. but I mean, it's all good. I, like I said from the beginning, I'm very thankful. I'm grateful. I'm humble. You know, to be able to come here and you know just play this game that I love. And just be able to play at Southern, you know. I mean, just being here from day one, Southern, you know, they welcome me with open arms. And I just, I just, you know, I'm just real grateful for that. But, you know, we got three more games left. The season not over. So, I'm just looking forward to that. It was a good day. Uh, senior day, not a lot of people can do all four years and get a degree after that. But it was a good day. I, I enjoyed every moment I had with this team. Um, hopefully, we can end this off by winning this way championship. Of course, it was magnificent. Southern University did a great job of making us feel appreciated. And with me being here four years, so we, I really enjoyed tonight. Sad we couldn't come out with a win, but hey, we got another one too. You gonna be here? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> funny guy, funny guy. Let's move on to some baseball. Let's talk about their results over this week. Southern took on, they had a road game against Arkansas Pine Bluff, the Golden Lions, and in game one, Southern fell to Pine Bluff six to five. But in game two, they redeemed themselves. Southern would beat Pine Bluff big. 12 to 1. And then Alcorn State in town for a midweek game. Hey, Coach Dawson Odom's in the house. <laughs> How you doing there, Coach? Early on, first and third for Southern's Frankie Montesino. He's going to rip this one to right field. Jags go up 1 to nothing. Then Mark Halen Boyd on the mound for Southern. No one on. Brenly Martina takes him deep for the solo shot. Ties it up at 1 couple of innings later bases well yeah they're juice chopper gonna score on another one for southern two to one jags the next batter coming up tyler laporte he's gonna take this one through center hits the gap three to one jags southern gonna take this one six to one and a quick softball update here Southern taking on Stephen of Austin. This was on Saturday, the final. Stephen of Austin, seven, Southern, zero. But we always bring you out the sounds of that human jukebox. I love hearing that every week. And we're celebrating the Lady Jags winning the swag. Trust me, you do not want to miss this. All right, and up next, a legend for the Jaguars is featured in a special NFL Network documentary. We'll be right back with more Inside the Jaguar Nation. You're watching Inside the Jaguar Nation, presented by Russell Law Firm, with Brian Holland, Morgan Beard, Ashley Lyotis, and Aaron Lee. Welcome back to Inside the Jaguar Nation. I'm Aaron Lee. She's Ashley Lyotis. And Ashley, it's a, we busy got, week. it's a busy week. We got the SWAC tournament coming up on Tuesday. As we talked about, the women finish first, so they'll be facing Pine Bluff. They kind of got a favorable, I don't want to say easy. Yeah, I don't no, want to jinx them. Nothing's easy in that. Nothing but they have easy. a favorable way to the championship because Texas Southern and Grambling are in the same bracket. So let's just hope they can take care of business. Now for the men, it's a little bit more difficult. They have to square off with Jackson State. State as finishing as a fourth seed. So Jackson State's a good team. It's a little tough, but look, Coach Morris, Scott, and the guys, I think they're ready for Tuesday to redeem themselves from Saturday's loss. So then, let's, let's course, talk some more basketball. Yeah, it's March, so we are talking all basketball, but it's that time of the year, more, uh, Aaron, that, that basketball kind of wraps up. Softball and baseball get underway. We actually take a look with Morgan Beard at what's coming up on the bluff this week. Morgan? 
Yeah, that's right, guys. We always say it's a busy time on the bluff, but this time it's a special time on the bluff. Bust out those calendars. It's a tournament edition. Let's get right to it, starting with the men. Tuesday, March 6th, the first round of the SWAC tournament begins. And then, of course, Friday, that thing is moving on to Houston, March 9th. And then for the women, though, Tuesday, March 6th as well. And, of course, the Lady Jags hosting versus Arkansas Pine Bluff on Tuesday. And, of course, like the men, it's going to Houston on Friday and we have some more stuff coming up. Baseball time Southern LSU on Tuesday at Alec Box Stadium. It doesn't get any bigger than this one. The Crosstown Clash 630 PM and it's a three game homestead with Texas Southern after that Friday, Saturday, Sunday from 6 PM to 2 PM and then 1 PM. So we got stuff of all kinds. Baseball, basketball and basketball right now is the story. Special shout out to Sandy Pugh, Brianna Green, and the rest of those ladies for wrapping up the SWAC regular season title. Time to do some work in the tournament. That's it for the look at the calendar. I'm Morgan Beard. Back to you guys. All right, good stuff, Morgan. This past Monday, the well, NFL Network aired a documentary to showcase HBCUs and former athletes. Among those was Southern University and former safety and cornerback Mel Blunt was featured was the featured Jaguar who is the four-time Super Bowl champion, five-time Pro Bowler, and he's a part of the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. And we just wanted to show him some love and give him a shout out for the HBCUs and the Southern Jaguars. It's all winning there on on the bluff. But you know who always wins? <laughs> it's that human jukebox, oh, as always. And right after the break, we have track and field. Assistant Coach Darden and Sprinter Talicia are in studio. We'll be right back with more Inside the Jaguar Nation. This is Inside the Jaguar Nation, presented by Russell Law Firm. Welcome back to Inside the Jaguar Nation. And this is the Champions Edition of the <laughs> show. Can you tell? So we bring part two of our interview with Track and Field. Oh, yeah. Coach White, assistant coach Darden, and some Jags came into the studio to speak about their success in the SWAC indoor championships and getting ready for outdoor season. Here's Brian Holland. Thanks, guys. Here with uh, Southern Track and Field, and we're going to focus on the track now. We got uh, Coach Darden here and Coach Let's talk about kind of closing like we were there with uh, uh, the field competitions, the field competitors. Just the outdoor, or I'm sorry, the indoor season is ending. The outdoor season is just upon us, but kind of wrap up uh, the indoor season for us. The indoor season, we had uh, quite a bit of um, victories. Um, we had uh, Tara Alicia Mercadale who won uh, the 400 meters, um, and we had um, another girl, um, a freshman, Raylan Price, who came in third in the 800. So overall, we also had other um, athletes that we brought that brought a lot to the table. You know, they went out there and they did their best. You know, so overall, it was I was very proud of them. And before we get to, to all that jewelry right over there, let's talk about how, how special is that to have a freshman, by the way, uh, come in and make a huge impact right away there uh, on the track? That's very good. That's yeah. very good. Um, that's what we're, we're looking to recruit. Mm -hmm. Recruit for the uh, freshmen that could come in and make a you know big impact. So as they get older, you know, as they go from um, sophomore, you know, to become an upperclassman, that they can really you know do even better. Yeah, and let's talk about some of those events that you excelled in. Uh, wh where did you finish in uh, in, this, in the SWAC championships, and, and how did you do? I ran a 400, and I also ran a 200. I missed it by one place in the finals for the 200. Oof. So that wasn't. It was okay for my indoor. It was better than last year. And for my 400 meter time, I was just so happy that I was able to get the time that I wanted. 55.7 was just my fastest indoor time that I had since I've been at Southern. And I'm just happy, thanks to my coach <laughs> and all the little hard work that she put on me. You know, <laughs> just, I just have to go out there and do what I got to do to get the gold. In my yeah, 55 seconds for about a quarter mile. That, that's mm -hmm. flying right there. What do you now uh, have to kind of turn your attention to now that we shift to the outdoor season? Things start warming up outside. Mm -hmm. uh, where can you kind of get better and what are your goals? My goals are to at least get down to 53 and in the four by the four by four I want us to win it all this time. We had mm -hmm. second but I just want to get that goal this time. And we also are going to be able to run the four by one. I want our girls to do better this year. And I just want the whole team to just get better. All right, from one champion to another champion, we know the human jukebox always number one. But coming up next, 
We talk more champions. You know that song? We are the champions. Yes. My friend. You don't want to hear me sing. I'm, <laughs> I'm, off, I'm off beat. We'll be right back with more Inside the Jaguar Nation. This is Inside the Jaguar Nation, presented by Russell Law Firm. Welcome back to Inside the Jaguar Nation. What a week on the bluff, Aaron. I'm really jealous because you got to be there for a pretty cool moment today. Yeah, it was a great moment today, but let's take a look back <laughs> at how they got there again. Great senior day yesterday. Enjoyed it myself. Brianna Green leaving her mark on the bluff. That would be two of her 17 points. And then you got Samantha Duncan knocking down a three as she was pumped up, yelling all night. And here she is again saying, look, this is my last game. I'm putting up shots, <laughs> I'm letting it fly. She was ready to go and, you know, Green just sealing the deal, sealing up for the Jaguars as they win in a blowout against Prairie View, 96-58. And today, Ashley, I got to witness them cutting down the nets. It was a special moment. Brianna Green having fun That's with the awesome. coach, the jokester. Red Lobster Pasta, we already know about that. <laughs> we already talked about that. Here's Samantha Duncan cutting down. Took her a while. She was just screaming again yeah, all day. I mean, you just live in that moment when it's something like that, especially for those seniors. You know, they get to go out with a moment like this. This is, you know, the last time they're going to get to do something like this. And that's that's one of those moments, Aaron, that you're just going to remember forever. Had the SWAC championship trophies out. It was just a beautiful moment today. Wishing them luck on Tuesday, the men and women. And look. I'm ready to go to Houston. <laughs> you are gearing up. You are ready to go. Houston, the bluff, we've got a lot going on. But I want to talk about someone up in Indianapolis right now. You know, we, we talked about a lot of LSU guys, but Southern has someone there as well. Yes, they do. They have Danny Johnson, who will be running tomorrow morning and getting ready for his 40. This is the biggest job interview of his life. So, again, we want to wish him luck on the bluff. Danny Johnson's number one on the field, number one in your heart. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about what you saw out of Danny this year that, you know, got him to the combine. The best player to represent Southern University on and off the field. Like I said, I wish him luck. I've seen him grown, not just as a student, but just as a man, as a father. And look, some team needs to draft Danny Johnson. Don't pass him up. And I think he's going to be a great NFL player, Ashley. Yeah, and we saw him on both sides of the ball this year, not just on, on defense or offense. We saw him both on Look, both. Look, he's an OW, an offensive <laughs> weapon, as he calls himself. So, look, he can play special teams, offense, defense. So, look, some team, you're going to get a great all-around player. So, All right. good luck, Danny Johnson. Yeah, good luck to you, Danny, up there in Indy. And we are about out of time. That'll do it for us here on Inside the Jaguar Nation. We'll see you next week.